Hey everyone, welcome to Trucking Sustainably. I'm your host, Jason Morgan. We are at Young Trucks. We are here because they are an EV certified dealer location. We're gonna meet with Ryan Young. We're gonna go inside the bays, see what it took to invest to become an EV certified location, all the safety and training that goes into it. We're gonna take a larger look at decarbonization service overall. They do natural gas here as well, diesel, natural gas, EVs. Let's head inside and see what we can learn. A couple quick background, background questions on the company for you. How many locations do you have? Uh, so we have three, three locations here in Canton. Okay, how many people overall? Uh, 170 under? employees. Okay, how many service bays? Oh geez, uh, <laughs> we have 32 here, 15 at another location, and probably another 15 at our body shop. When did you make the decision to get EV certified? Uh, it would have been at the beginning of the year in 2022, I believe it was June. Okay. Um, I would say, generally speaking, with us, uh, we like to try to stay ahead of technology. Yeah. So we're always looking at different ways to improve and know what the newest, latest, greatest technology is for our customers. So right. we're ready and prepared to service uh, the trucks for them when it comes out. Right. So at this location, what all went into getting EV certified? What investments did you have to make? What training did you have to get? Uh, so training wise, everyone in the entire dealership had to go through a safety training on the electrics. We had two guys go off site to learn how to commission and decommission trucks. Okay. Uh, we've had to, for this building, we had, uh, I believe it was 208 power. We had to get a step up transformer to get up to 480 volts in order to use the, uh, the battery charger. Right. Uh, we have a, the smallest one you can do on a truck is a 50 kilowatt charger and that charger alone is about $48,000. Wow. All in all, just under probably an 80, 80 $90,000 range to get fully tooled up and everything in place. Did you have to work with the utility to do that? Uh, in our case, no. Uh, since we're only using a 50 kilowatt charger, I had enough um, enough amperage here on site that I didn't have to okay. for a 50 kilowatt charger okay you know that's not really a fast charge on a truck it's gonna right. take overnight to do sure so if we're doing a lot of them and or if you're actually you know charging it for use every day or trying to do a faster turnaround we probably need something a lot bigger yeah for sure that's a I mean that's even a smaller kind of mobile unit too if you ever needed to maybe expand or add another bay right you just kind of put another one in there and you can roll that one over roll that one correct that was that was the idea yeah. um, not knowing how fast the technology was going to go, we wanted to put an investment in it, but also be able to, you know, have some flexibility. Right. So if yeah, if we needed to charge another truck up, we can add another plug. Right. Uh, also, we have a body shop, okay. and if if we ended up needed to use the charger over there, yeah, there comes a point in time we can just add a plug. Maybe we just ship that over, so we right. don't have to spend another fifty thousand dollars on another charger. So commission and decommission the truck. Can you tell me about that? Is that is that is that disconnecting the battery power from the truck? That just seems like a bit of a different terminology from the diesel world. Yes, so that's actually just taking the, all the power from the, the batteries, it's a really high voltage. It is getting the, the battery power off of the unit to make it safe to work on. What type of service work do you expect to do on, on those types of vehicles? Like the VNR electric, what kind of service would you expect to do here on that? It's more of the components that go around around the truck that are still the same as what's on a diesel unit today. Mm -hmm. So even uh, just like a windshield wiper motor or, or whatnot, just the normal normal items that you work on service-wise for a diesel truck also. Right, and, and I mean, you mentioned the training too. I imagine lots of, uh, what is it, personal protective equipment, right? That PPE that goes into it, some different processes there. What was, did your technicians have any thoughts on just kind of going through that training, getting used to it and understanding the, the requirements there? Uh, I was, yeah, there's, uh, even sockets are, are oh, yeah. done for electric. It's it's uh, more like working on power lines, I think it is, than working <laughs> on a truck. Uh, from the from the gloves to yeah. the all the sockets are covered, the torque wrenches, everything. They're all insulated tools. And, you know, everything wrenches, things as screwdrivers, just the normal hand tools that you would use. But they all got coatings on them to be insulated to make sure that they don't. Uh, make it have a lot of electricity to travel through them. One of the things that concerned our techs right off the bat was uh, we literally have two body hooks that are required. Okay. Uh, but just to be able to make sure that you can be able to pull somebody away from a, a unit if they get electrocuted. But uh, okay. 
ideally you right. have enough training and or make sure you do things safely to, to do it safely. Right, well, I need, okay, so you mentioned the body hooks. Those are for people, not the truck body, right? Because that's what I would usually think of as truck body, but that's a safety a safety issue and just being able to get people out of the area in case of an incident. Uh, that, that is correct, and that's one, you know, one of the required tools. It's definitely a new technology, so I think in that you get fear from technicians. Right. Uh, I think if you go all the way back in the beginning of time when you're working on gasoline even, right. you know, if somebody was probably scared to death to have a gasoline strapped to the back of their car, right? right. So it's just a new technology that's getting used to, to having so, uh, different propulsion uh, power on a vehicle. Going back to the one thing I did want to touch on the electric side, the bay, it's all roped off. Even when there's not, not a vehicle in there, are there only certain techs that can go in there? Can everyone go in there? How does that work in terms of access and just getting into the bay versus you know being able to kind of walk around freely in a diesel, diesel shop? Uh, so that's one thing that's definitely different. Uh, we just put them out actually today since you're going to be in to check out our EV <laughs> okay, service cool. bay. So they would b normally be out, but not fully in case like you saw them. They would be if an electric truck was on it. Okay. And that's just to make sure that everybody knows that they're approaching a you know vehicle with high voltage and to make sure that they're safe. Uh, you also see that there's a, uh, a piece of paper there that, that'll tell you what technician's working on it. Mm -hmm. And yes, you do need to know what you're doing before you enter in that area. Mm -hmm. Is that bait only for electric vehicles or can, if there's not an electric vehicle, can you get a diesel in there and service it there or do you have to dedicate it for the EV side? So um, we call it dedicated. It is dedicated for, for EV, so that's where we would, we would put the trucks. But, you know, at a time like right now where we don't have an EV truck to work on, we can put that stuff off to the side and we can still pull on a diesel truck to get work done. Well, you're talking about different technology too and you being ahead of it. We're standing in the natural gas service center because you're also natural, you service natural gas yes. trucks. Can you kind of tell me what's going on here? How is this different from the diesel side? So when it comes to natural gas, it's completely, completely different. It's even a little more in depth as far as investment for safety. So in this building, uh, there, the room that we're in is completely monitored. There's uh, sensors throughout the building mm -hmm. that monitor to make sure this room's safe. There's uh, audible visual alarms that will go off also. Everything needs to be blast proof or sealed heaters. It, there's a lot that goes into it, uh, but we you know, obviously make sure that it's a safe working environment if there was a leak of natural gas in a truck here. When we were walking through, you noted something special about this wall too. How is that different than a typical shop? So this is a full firewall. So anything going in and out of it, uh, even even has uh, like a, a reddish fireproof uh, caulk that, okay. they, that they use. Oh wow! So that we can keep the two sides of the room separate. Okay, very cool. Very cool. Well, and I, and I think you said too, right? Uh, more investment here actually than over on the EV side to yeah. be able to service natural gas. I, I mean, if you look look through, you can see all the duct work that's that's in this facility. All that's to. Uh, evacuate the air in case that it's it's an unsafe environment. Also the heaters, you have to have special heaters in here to make sure that you don't accidentally ignite natural gas when it's what's up in the air. Right. Uh, right. And also all the electricity, if you notice, nothing goes down within 18 inches of the floor or ceiling. Oh, yeah. And that's to make sure again that a, an electrical short doesn't accidentally cause a fire. So you can see even the sign on the door. So you oh, gotta yeah. make sure all the all four of these lamps are illuminated. What this is, you normally see this in manufacturing also, but it shows that all three phases of electricity are working. Uh, we also have this green light over here. So this is connected up to the computer that's monitoring the air in the building. Uh, and when it gives a green light, it knows that it's, it's working properly. Uh, but we ended up finding that we lost a phase at one point, and that ended up being a level concern because we weren't sure whether or not the system was monitoring it properly because mm -hmm. we didn't have the right electricity. So we went and installed this also to add a, a backup to make sure to know that this, this system's operating correctly. So what's really interesting with natural gas is that the final authority is, is your fire marshal who yeah. might not necessarily know about all the nuances of natural gas sure. and service work. So you're kind of walking around showing them and, and listing all the, th the safety items that you're going through and doing properly to make right. sure that they know that we've done it right. Well, and wh what's really cool in coming to visit here too, I mean, you know, we talk about decarbonization, sustainability in the trucking industry. I mean, we have diesel that's cleaner than ever. You, you're working on natural gas here, which can also, if you use renewable natural gas, can all, uh, offer net negative emissions, right? You're ready to service battery electric vehicles and trucks when they roll in here. But, I, you know, I think this side, the service side, the after sales side support doesn't get enough enough love on the headlines because this is where the work, real work uh, gets done is once the vehicles are out there, they need to be able to service them. You need to be able to turn around. You need to be able to 
keep your technicians safe and productive as well. So there's a lot that goes into it uh, as opposed to just developing the technology ahead of time as well. You mm -hmm. need both, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, these guys are, you know, what keeps trucks on the road as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and they definitely need to know uh, how to get them fixed. All right, Ryan, hey, thanks for taking the time, uh, letting us come and visit, learned a lot. Appreciate it. Absolutely, I appreciate you coming, Jason. Thank you, and we'll see you all on the next Trucking Sustainable.